Hello, and welcome to another video about set theory. Um, uh, so this is going to be an exciting video uh, because basically what we've been working towards so far is introducing this notion of the relation. This is really important for understanding uh, the structure of language, uh, and so now we can start applying this notion of a relation to language um, to do some really interesting things. Uh, so that's what we're going to start talking about in this video. We'll have a couple more natural language asides talking about relations as well. Um, so up until this point, we've been talking a lot about uh, how uh, with these basic verbs and basic adjectives, you can link something with them by basically saying that the meaning of the sentence Ravi runs is that Ravi is a member of the set of things X such that X runs, right? This is nice because it doesn't make us figure out exactly like what, what it is about Ravi that qualifies him to be a runner, right? We don't have to do that um, with math, but we could say Ravi runs, Melody runs, right? And we could just use this same pattern to make the statement over and over again. Uh, and we can sort of figure out how the things combine without having to figure out what is the meaning of Ravi and what is the meaning of runs um, necessarily. So the way that we write this uh, in semantics is that the meaning of the word run, that's what these brackets mean, these sort of funky double brackets mean assess the meaning of whatever is inside of here. And this means that the meaning of run is the set of all things X such that X runs. And when you combine it with a noun like this, what all that you're saying is that the noun is a member of that set, right? Um, this becomes a lot more difficult when we have sentences like this one, like Melody likes cheese. So we could say that the meaning of this sentence is Melody is a member of the set of things X such that X likes cheese. And this does represent the meaning of this sentence. This is a correct way to represent the meaning of this sentence, um, but it creates some problems when we start uh, introducing things like melody likes Ravi. Right? So now are we just going to have to create a whole another meaning for, for likes something else, right? So this is making us say that, you know, if we want to say that the meaning of this sentence is essentially just melody combining with the meaning of this, which is the set of things X such that X likes cheese, right? Then we, then we don't have a nice way to deal with the meaning of the word likes where we can switch out the object, right? That's really what we want to be able to do is have, is have a meaning for like that can accept both an object and a subject, right? So both the thing that is doing the liking and the thing that is being liked have to go in into this um, thing. Uh, so if we look at this, essentially what we're doing is we're creating pairs of things that go into a liking relationship with each other. So we might say that the meaning of like is a set of sets, right? A set of pairs of things X, Y, such that X likes Y. Um, so this is if we're just using our regular uh, set expressions. The problem with this is that the fact that Melody likes Ravi does not necessarily entail that Ravi likes Melody. Um, and so we can't just say that it's, it's a set. We actually have to say it's a set of ordered pairs, right? Um, such that X likes Y, right? So, so here we have a set of ordered pairs, which means that likes is a relation. Look at that. Likes is a relation between two sets, a set of likers and a set of likees, right? So, so here we have Ravi, Melody, and Beulah. Um, we've already said that Ravi likes running, right? We've said that Melody likes cheese and that Melody likes Ravi, 
and maybe Beulah likes running also, right? So this is a relation which we could list um, like this. We could say L equals a set like this, Ravi and running, uh, Melody and cheese, Melody and Ravi, and Beulah and running. And this is the meaning of the verb like, to like. Um, interestingly enough, we have we can immediately see that there are now two different types of verbs um, that languages share. So there's types of verbs that are relations, right? They're, they're, um, they take two things, right? Pairs X, Y. They take a pair to create a set. And then there are um, verbs like runs, which just takes one thing. It's just a set of, of, of items, right? So we've already got things that we call one place predicates and we've got things that we call two place predicates you might know these better as intransitive verbs and transitive verbs um, as it turns out, there are, in fact, also three place predicates. So if we look at this, this word, Beulah gave Ravi cheese, and we want to assess the meaning of give, we can't just do it as a two place predicate because we've got three things involved in this, right? So Beulah gave Ravi cheese is not the same thing as Beulah gave cheese Ravi, that would be weird, or, Be or, or Ravi gave Beulah cheese, right? Those have all different meanings, right? So we can think of the word give as a set of triples such that X gives um, Z to Y, right? X gives Z to Y, right? So Beulah gives cheese to Ravi. Right? So this in introduces um, a three-place predicate um, and, and so having this sort of language allows us to look at verbs um, as being parts of three different categories and we can fit them into these categories based on how they combine with other things in the sentence. So this is, has been our first natural language aside. Um, stay tuned for more of these to follow.